The movie begins with an intriguing scene where we meet Becky, a young girl stepping into an elevator, phone in hand. She's about to embark on a daring experiment with the infamous elevator game, a viral internet challenge of a creepy urban legend. According to this chilling tale, players must follow a specific sequence of pressing elevator buttons to purportedly access another realm. The game's lore is both fascinating and terrifying. On reaching the fifth floor, a ghostly woman is said to appear and transport participants to her otherworldly domain. Players must avoid any temptation to gaze upon her or speak, for doing so invites a gruesome fate at her hands. Upon closing the elevator doors on the fifth floor, the ritual dictates pressing the button for the first floor. However, if executed correctly, the elevator defies expectations and ascends to the tenth floor instead, leading to a mysterious, red-tinted dimension. Becky, recording her adventure on her phone, faithfully follows these steps. Despite a fierce internal struggle, her curiosity proves too strong. She opens her eyes before the doors fully shut and presses the button for the first floor. Contrary to her anticipation of descending, the elevator erratically shuttles between floors before halting at the tenth. Here, Becky senses an ominous presence and encounters a spectral figure who confronts her with a haunting inquiry, resulting in her untimely death. Months after this harrowing event, the narrative shifts to a group of five freshly graduated high school friends, Maddie, Chris, Izzy, Chloe, and Kevin. They share a passion for creating horror-themed content, a hobby nurtured during their school days that has now evolved into a significant endeavor. Their YouTube channel, dedicated to producing spine-tingling episodes, has taken on a professional dimension, serving as a means to finance their college education. Soon after, we are introduced to Kevin, who plays a dual role as both the director and administrator of the group. His responsibilities are crucial, involving the management of relationships and scheduling tasks for the team. The storyline thickens when the group faces a challenge from their sponsors. These financial backers are displeased with the team's latest episode, particularly because their product was not highlighted sufficiently. They demand a reshoot, insisting that their product be showcased more prominently. Under pressure to appease their sponsors, Kevin reassures them with a promise. He commits to giving their product a more visible role in the next episode. This situation forces the team into a tight spot, requiring them to quickly produce another episode. During this time of urgency, Kevin introduces Ryan to the group. Ryan, a fan of their work, eagerly joins the team as an intern. Chloe, who leads the research department, is not in favor of rushing into a new episode. She stresses the importance of thorough research to maintain the credibility of their content. Chloe argues that delving into archives to unearth a fresh and engaging topic takes time. However, Kevin, feeling the pressure of the situation, insists on finding a quick and simple topic. He urges everyone to brainstorm ideas swiftly. Ryan, seizing the opportunity, proposes the idea of the elevator game. He pitches it as an ideal choice due to its simplicity, low cost, and ease of filming. Ryan also ties in the local angle, mentioning Becky's incident, which happened in their neighborhood. This suggestion, however, meets resistance from Chris, who criticizes the idea for being mundane and uninteresting. He argues that their audience wouldn't be captivated by watching them simply ride an elevator for an extended period. Despite the lack of consensus and the simplicity of the idea, Kevin feels cornered into accepting Ryan's suggestion, as no other compelling ideas are presented. Meanwhile, Chloe takes on the role of welcoming Ryan to the team. She gives him a tour of their studio, which includes a wellness center located on the roof. As a gesture of inclusion and practicality, she adds her contact number to his phone, ensuring easy communication within the team. The story progresses as the group of young adventurers finds themselves at the very apartment building where Becky had mysteriously vanished. They arrive fully equipped with their filming gear, eager to delve into the unknown. Kevin, ever mindful of their obligations, suggests that everyone don the t-shirts provided by their sponsors to ensure they stay in their good graces. However, this idea is quickly dismissed by the others as being excessive. Only Izzy agrees to wear the shirt. Taking advantage of the fact that it's Saturday and the office building is nearly deserted, the group easily gains access to the premises. 
Ryan and Izzy collaborate to set up a camera inside the elevator, while Izzy expertly connects all other cameras to her tablet via Wi-Fi, enabling her to monitor the live feed. During their preparation, Chloe shares with Ryan her passion for history, explaining that it's her love for the past that drives her interest in research. The scene shifts to Chris, Maddie, and Chloe as they enter the elevator, ready to begin their eerie experiment. Chris, with a flair for improvisation, starts narrating the episode, while Maddie explains the specific sequence of elevator buttons they must press. 4, 2, 6, 2, 10, 5, and finally, one. The legend of the elevator game that they are testing claims that upon reaching the fifth floor, one must close their eyes until the doors shut automatically, or else face a fatal encounter with the ghostly lady. Back in the elevator, Maddie, Chris, and Chloe, though skeptical, proceed with the game. They press the buttons for floors four and two, during which Chloe recounts the chilling tale of Becky's disappearance. The tension escalates as Izzy, Ryan, and Kevin, who are watching the live feed on a tablet, notice some unsettling interferences. As the elevator reaches the sixth floor, the lights begin to flicker ominously, instilling fear in Maddie. He expresses a strong desire to abandon the experiment and leave the show, but Chris and Chloe persuade him to stay. The scene sets the stage for the unfolding horror, as the group teeters on the edge of the unknown, questioning the reality of the urban legend they are about to confront. The tension escalates as the group reaches the tenth floor, which they find eerily deserted. Continuing their daring exploration, they proceed to the fifth floor for the crucial moment of their experiment. Maddie, overwhelmed with fear, pleads with Chris to keep his eyes shut, as he starts to believe in the sinister legend of the elevator game. Chris, with a hint of skepticism, agrees nonchalantly. Meanwhile, down in the building's lobby, an unexpected turn of events unfolds. A security guard arrives for a routine check, prompting the group to hastily find a hiding spot. During this moment of panic, the live feed from the elevator's camera continues to stream to their tablet, but they are unable to monitor it. Back in the elevator, the trio stands with their eyes tightly closed, in accordance with the game's rules, as the camera records this tense scene. Chris, with a smirk and a touch of bravery, briefly opens his eyes, curious to see if anything will happen. To his lack of surprise, nothing out of the ordinary occurs. After the elevator doors shut, Chloe and Maddie finally open their eyes, exhaling in relief. Chris, still smirking, presses the button for the first floor. However, instead of descending, the elevator unnervingly starts ascending a clear indication that something is amiss. Maddie, gripped by terror, attempts to halt the elevator, but is restrained by the others. The elevator unexpectedly halts at the ninth floor, where an employee, having pressed the down button, is startled to find them there. Ultimately, they all end up back in the lobby, where Chloe hears a strange, rhyming tune just as the elevator doors close, adding to the mystery. Back at the studio, Izzy faces a dilemma, Due to some unexplained interference, a significant portion of their recorded data is lost, necessitating a reshoot. Chris, still convinced that the elevator game is nothing but a bluff, flatly refuses to participate in a reshoot. This is when Ryan reveals his personal connection to the legend. Becky, the girl who vanished, was his younger sister. He recounts how Chris had lured Becky into attempting the dangerous game with the false promise of featuring her on their show. This revelation stirs a wave of anger among the group, particularly against Chris, as they perceive his actions as a form of exploitation. Chris, in a burst of fury, denies all accusations, maintaining that Becky had simply run away from home. The already tense atmosphere erupts into a physical altercation between Ryan and Chris. Their confrontation is abruptly ended when the security guard intervenes, expelling the group from the premises. Chloe expresses her sympathy towards Ryan for his loss, but it's revealed that he too had deceived the team to compel them into creating a show based on the elevator game. The day ends with Izzy and Kevin returning to the studio, determined to salvage what they can from the footage they have managed to capture. The plot thickens as Izzy realizes she left a camera inside the elevator. Therefore, she and Kevin make their way back to the same building. By this time, evening is setting in, creating a more ominous atmosphere for their return. Meanwhile, Chris attempts to reach out to Chloe to express his feelings, but Chloe is not interested in listening. 
In her own apartment, she experiences a chilling moment when she hears the same eerie rhyme that had echoed in the elevator earlier. Chris, upon entering the lobby of his apartment, encounters the same ghost that appeared during Becky's mysterious incident. This ghostly encounter leaves him catatonic and ultimately leads to his death. Elsewhere, Maddie finds himself waiting at a bus station, his bus unusually delayed. Ryan, deeply troubled and determined to find his sister, heads back to the building. He enters the elevator and presses the buttons in the prescribed sequence. After reaching the fifth floor, the elevator ascends to the tenth floor, revealing a surreal world bathed in a shadowy red light. This alternate realm, eerily similar yet distinct from the normal world, terrifies Ryan. He steps out, only to be pursued by the same ghost, forcing him to flee back to the lobby where he locks himself in. Back in the regular world, Izzy and Kevin retrieve the forgotten camera. However, instead of leaving, Izzy impulsively decides to try out the elevator game for fun. On reaching the fifth floor, they disregard the rule about closing their eyes, with Izzy jokingly dismissing the ghost as fake. In a horrifying twist, the ghost materializes behind Kevin, fatally attacking him as Izzy watches in shock. This gruesome scene, along with Izzy's subsequent death, is all captured on camera. The elevator then ascends to the tenth floor, opening into the otherworldly realm where Ryan is hiding. Ryan, in a frantic state, boards the elevator and encounters the ghost lady attempting to attack him. Inside, he discovers the recording on Izzy's camera, but is baffled by the absence of Izzy and Kevin's bodies. Meanwhile, Chloe, deeply engrossed in researching the elevator game, uncovers a disturbing pattern of numerous girls disappearing after attempting the game. She then receives a panicked call from Ryan, explaining his terrifying experiences. She advises him to meet her at the wellness center in the office building. Simultaneously, Maddie is tormented by the ghost, which sends him into a panic. He flees in terror and contacts Chloe, who instructs him to come to the office. On his way, Maddie dashes into a restaurant, frantically gathering items like salt and a lamp to create a protective circle, hoping to repel the ghost. His knowledge of voodoo, gleaned from working on the horror show, fuels his desperate attempt, though he remains unsure of its effectiveness. The ghost continues to haunt him, heightening the sense of dread and uncertainty as the story progresses. In the climactic scenes of the story, the suspense intensifies at the wellness center. Ryan, still reeling from his experiences, shares with Chloe the harrowing details of his solo venture into the mysterious Red World. He hands over Izzy's camera, which contains footage of the terrifying events. Chloe, initially skeptical, is shocked and frightened by what she sees. Despite her fear, she considers going to the police, but her plan is interrupted when Maddie arrives in a state of panic. Maddie, clearly distressed, recounts his own ghostly encounter, but Chloe is hesitant to believe him. She remains convinced that the events unfolding around them are nothing more than an elaborate internet hoax. Her research had revealed that the origins of the elevator game myth trace back a decade to a tragic accident involving a group of drunk sorority sisters and their friend Alice. The prank gone wrong resulted in Alice's accidental death in an elevator shaft, fueling the legend. As Maddie and Ryan argue against involving the police and insist on finding their own solution, a haunting detail emerges. The nursery rhyme that Chloe has been hearing repeatedly turns out to be intricately connected to the elevator game, containing a hidden message about closing the elevator door to banish the ghost. This crucial piece of information had eluded the group until now. The tension reaches a breaking point when the ghost appears in the studio, terrifying Chloe. Maddie, believing they are safe within a protective circle, is proven tragically wrong when the ghost breaches the circle and kills him. In a frantic response, Ryan grabs Chloe and they rush to the office building. Confronted by a security guard, Chloe uses Mace to incapacitate him and they hurry into the elevator to start the game again. Ascending to the 10th floor, Chloe finally witnesses the eerie red world Ryan had described. While Ryan briefly leaves the elevator to search for his sister, Chloe pulls him back in, understanding the danger they are in. As the elevator descends and stops at the fifth floor, they close their eyes, bracing for an attack. The ghostly voice of the lady inquires about their destination. Chloe, unable to resist, slightly opens her eyes, leading to her attack by the ghost. Ryan, witnessing the bloodshed, also succumbs to temptation and opens his eyes, resulting in his own demise. 
the film concludes with a chilling scene set a few months later. Another girl, seeking fame on Instagram, enters the same elevator to play the game. She mentions the disappearance of Chloe and her friends, suggesting that the legend of the elevator game continues to lure unsuspecting victims. The movie ends on this ominous note, hinting that the cycle of tragedy and mystery surrounding the elevator game is far from over. Did this story spook you out? Let us know in the comments below. For more horror movie recaps, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in the next one. Fear awaits you.